What's up guys, Aronius here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today's video is going to be all about Faction Wars, and in this video it's Skinwalker Script Faction Wars, so let's get it. Alright, so I just want to let you guys know I've been playing for a little over two years. I'm pretty excited right now because I'm getting so close, and I mean so close, to beating all of the faction crypts. It's taken me two years and about three months to complete. Um, the only faction crypt I have remaining is Shadowkin. So Shadowkin, it's opening not for five days, damn it. But, um, you know, that's coming soon. So five more days I could beat Shadowkin. Uh, the boss stage on stage 21 is annoying because I think it's the red boss and the red boss smacks really hard. So, and then he ends up targeting that one champion and tries to kill them. Um, it's difficult if you don't have a reviver. So you kind of have to go with um, regeneration gear or immortal gear on this boss. However, I did just recently beat Skinwalker's Crypt. So Skinwalker's Crypt, uh, I got 63 stars as you can see here. Um, I beat that about three days ago when it was open, three or four days ago. And I'm just recording this now because, you know, I was busy. So super pumped. I'm going to showcase to you all the different champions I utilized and the gear that I utilize on those champions as well. So let's take a look at the faction here. So that's my uh, Shadowkins, a little sneak peek on the champions that I'm using. Uh, yeah, a little bit legendary heavy. So many of you probably will already have Ninja, Yoshi, uh, and a couple of these other champions as well. But um, let me scroll down. We're not talking about that today. We are talking about Skinwalkers, obviously. Um, so here we are. Here's my Skinwalkers team. I've got... Narog, which is the first one. It is a legendary champion, I will say. I pulled Narog very early on playing this game. I have my Norog in a stun set. Obviously, Norog's very, very good. He can actually be utilized as a damage dealer, and that's kind of what I did here. Kind of like a pseudo damage dealer. A little bit of support, uh, because he does have the block buffs debuff uh, on the A2, and it's an attack all enemy skill. So he's got 37k HP. 3,900, let's call it 4,000 defense, 202 speed, because I want him taking as many turns as possible. He's not built for heavy damage, I will say, but um, when he does hit, he does pretty decent damage. Uh, I do have him in 258 accuracy as well, so he's landing those debuffs. I have him in a stun set, so you want to make sure you can get the CC on those waves, because uh, those waves do hit pretty hard. I do have him fully booked out. He doesn't really cost many books to fully book out. I booked him out. He's been booked out for a long time now because Shadowkin is my second to last crypt to beat. I will say Shadowkin's somewhat difficult if you don't have a legendary or if you don't have good gear. Um, especially if you don't have a reviver. Uh, so I did have to put some decent gear on um, and this is what I utilize. Now, there are a couple champions that you can utilize that are actually, I think, uncommon champions, which I'll showcase in a little bit. But uh, like I said, he only takes seven books, not bad. I did get his masteries fully done. I went with War Master on the right, and then I went down to Master Hexer and Cycle of Magic in case uh, he can decrease a cooldown at the start of each turn um, for his skills. You can see that he has a block active skills on the A1 with a 60% chance to land. That's not bad. And then a block buffs debuff for two turns on a three turn cooldown. So this is really good, uh, especially against Valkyries and other waves that place uh, increased defense on themselves and allow themselves to sustain even longer than they should. So good champion. Let's go on to the next one here. The next champion I do have is Hofori's and uh, a revive champion. Uh, so he. He, she, I don't know, I think it's a he, but does do a revive. Two random allies, 50% HP, fills the term years by 50%. And after placing the revival, also places a strengthen for one turn on all allies. This is clutch against the boss. Uh, really good against wave content as well. Um, does have an aura, resist in all battles by 40. You can utilize that if you'd like. Does help out. And then increase attack and increase crit rate on all allies for two turns. So if you have a good damage dealer, um, like Fane for example, this is great for a champion like Fane, where you don't have to put 100% crit rate on that champion. Um, masteries, I went down with Spirit Haste. So each dead ally 
This uh, champion goes eight speed faster, stacks up to 24 in case three of the champions are dead uh, because the revival on this champion is a seven turn cooldown unless you have books. So I did get one book into this champion, got it down to six turns, but it's definitely difficult. I won't say it's an easy battle. Uh, now I did do full auto um, against this boss when I finally upgraded this champion a little bit further, got him to rank six, uh, level 60, and you definitely want to make sure you get high HP on this champion so they're not targeted as much. Good speed. I got 209 speed. If you can get higher, great. Uh, 262 resistance to help block those fears against the boss and then 233 accuracy to help land the stun from the A1. This is not booked out at all but it is 10% chance to place a stun for each hit so you're looking at roughly 20% chance if you want to calculate it up but um, yeah very good champion again those are the masteries I went with. Uh, let's go on to the next champion here. So the next champion we've got is Burangiri. So Burangiri also a good champion. You might know this guy formerly as the Bommel boss beater. Right? He's he's basically soloing Bommel. Um, you can get him into, if you can get him into really high HP, like 60 to 80k HP, he can solo Bommel all the way through the normal Doom Tower. And I think he can solo on the first, I think level 10 of the Doom Tower on Bommel and level 50 of Doom Tower Hard on Bommel as well. So he's pretty slow for me. I wish I could get him faster, but I did get 220 resistance on him. I wanted to try to help resist against the final boss uh, so that he's not getting as many fears against himself or any other debuffs from that boss. Uh, accuracy is pretty low, but um, he actually does land some stuns against the waves with that low of accuracy because I went with the support tree of accuracy. And then I went with Evil Eye against the boss again. Um, and, and then I went with Resurgent as well in case that boss does hit really hard. Hopefully one of those uh, debuffs will get removed. So Resurgent, do not sleep on that ability. It's a very, very good ability for all your team. Uh, for his abilities, I, booked a, I put a few books into him. Um, I ended up getting this ability, Frightful Warcry, down to a four turn instead of six turn cooldown. Strengthen buff on all allies, also places a shield buff for two turns on all allies with less than 50% HP. The shield buff is equal to 15% of their max HP, so that's good uh, against the boss. Uh, also has a resistance in all battles by 40, so him and Hoforis both have that aura. So then going over here, I've maxed out all of the artifacts on this champion and of course if I were to upgrade them I'd probably go with HP or accuracy um, most likely HP especially if you want to utilize him against Bommel um, so let's move on to the next champion here all right so for the next champion we've got Gnarlhorn. Gnarlhorn's a very very good rare champion a uh, good HP based champion not a support champion because he doesn't do any healing or anything like that but he's kind of like a support champion, right? Because he does have the ward drum on the A2, which provokes all the enemies for one turn and places an increased defense buff on himself uh, for two turns. So that's really good. So he's tanking up all the waves damage so that your team does not get damaged at all. On the A1, it's pretty much a crap attack. It does nothing. It's uh, no damage. It can't be critical, strong, or weak hit. So it just does like a, a couple of thousand damage. It's not really that great. Uh, but that's not what you're using this guy for. You're just using him to CC all the enemies and then places an unkillable buff on himself, which is also really good against the boss because uh, you can put that unkillable on the right time and then he won't get killed by that boss. Uh, he also has a defense in dungeons by 27%. So he's good for progression-based wave and also in dungeons like um, Dragon. So, so there's that. Uh, I did put him in a shield set. So he's in a shield set, I put him in whatever this set's called, I forget what it's called, Divine Life Set, so it does put a shield on himself for three turns, plus 15% HP. You want this guy to have as much HP as possible. If you can put him in a shield set, great. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put him in a shield set, I just thought it was nice to utilize, especially against the waves when you're getting hit pretty hard. Um, this isn't great gear, as you can see, it's all five star gear. Now I will say the accessories are six star, from spider but if you're farming spider for a long time you should get pretty decent gear from spider uh, his gear is not all maxed and then when I go to the masteries I did try to go with as many masteries as I could do so I did go with spirit haste he gets faster for every dead ally 
and I went with Evil Eye. Again, to hit that boss, reduce his turn meter is going to be very helpful. I also went with Selfless Defender on him so that he's soaking up the damage uh, on that first hit uh, as compared to everybody else, so by 20%, which is not bad. Steel School, everybody, I feel like almost everybody should have this champion. Um, if you don't have them, or maybe you vaulted them, check your vault. Maybe you have them, but Steel Skull is a very good champion. I mean, very good support-based champion. A1 with the poison potential being placed. A2 removes all debuffs from a target ally, heals them by 40%. That's massive. Um, also on the A3, 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns, and heals them by 20% of their max HP. So this is a massive skill. I would recommend booking this guy out to rank 6, level 60, but you don't necessarily have to. If you can get him fast, then you're good, but I don't have any books in this guy whatsoever. He has an aura in Faction Crypts as well, defense-based aura. I did use him as my lead for the 27% defense in Faction Crypts, which helped, was very helpful. And then for the Masteries, I went down with like healing masteries to help him out to survive a little bit longer. Again, I went with Evil Eye for the boss to reduce the turn meter, and then a 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn at the start of every turn. And that was in hopes to get that A3 to go again and again and again, um, just to help support the team. Uh, so you can see that I have a couple of decent pieces on him. So like this is probably the best piece on him. This. Uh, Resilience piece right here with the resistance, speed, accuracy, attack. I really didn't want it to land on attack, but it is what it is. And then we've got more speed. So you're really looking for speed, defense, HP on a champion like this and on pretty much any uh, support based champion. So he doesn't have insane stats. The reality is he's just really fast. So 224 speed, uh, 199 accuracy. So he's landing most of his debuffs. And you can see I went with the support tree here so he can help uh, land more debuffs on the boss and on any other of the waves as well. Let me know in the comments below what team you guys utilize to beat Skinwalker's Crypt. If you haven't beat them, maybe try out a couple of these champions for yourself. Um, actually, you know what? I'm thinking I'm missing one more champion. One more champion that I utilized is this champion right here. Can't believe I forgot about this champion. So Fane. Fane is also a really good champion to utilize. You can use her in... Um, any, pretty much anything for progression and everybody should have got this champion for free if you've been playing for the last six months because about I think it was two to six months ago there was like an issue with the game and they actually allowed everybody to put in a certain code to get Fane for free so you should probably have Fane in, on your account already if not then there's other attack based champions damage dealing champions that you can utilize I do have her with high attack pretty decent HP so she's not targeted okay crit rate not 100% again you want to try to get 100% crit rate if you can if you can help it 213% crit damage 284 accuracy a little bit higher than you should need it to be you only need 230 accuracy in faction wars so you can reduce that i have her higher on the, on the totem pole there for accuracy because i use her in other areas of the game like doom tower so she does have a nice a1 which reduces and steals turn meter for the target uh, 35 percent chance of stealing five percent which is nice and then the a2 this is her another good ability uh, two poisons and a decrease attack which is really good for the boss and then the a3 decrease defense and weaken also really good for the boss i happen to get lucky and you should definitely put books into this champion you can get her to rank six level 60 very great champion especially for spiders um, i actually have a an 18 second spider run because of this champion she goes in with this a3 places decreased defense and weaken on the spider and then I utilize cold hearts and royal guards and then a HP burn champion to wipe out that that spider in no time so definitely utilize this champion if you can help it for masteries I went with war master on the bottom there and some damage based masteries here and then on the right side I went with HP because again I didn't need any additional accuracy on her not necessary uh, but I did go with evil eye and Master Hexer to hopefully extend the duration of the decreased defense and weaken on the targets. So those are the champions I utilize. Again, it was Norog, Fane, Steel Skull, Gnarlhorn, and Hofories. Those are the five champions that I utilize in my Skinwalker's Crypt. So 
Guys, enjoy the video. You're gonna watch the, the clip. It's uh, I sped it up so it's a little bit easier for you to watch and you, you can skip to the end if you'd like to. If you don't wanna watch it and you just wanted to see the, the champion's builds, then awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. I'd be so thankful for you guys to subscribe. And if you wanna see any more videos like this, please leave a comment down below. Thanks and take care.